The Night Tube has been launched on the London Underground almost three years since it was first announced. Labour leadership with Jeremy Corbyn on defending a NATO alley. Is he right or is he wrong? Olympics gold rush. The UK has been doing very well. And even Jamaica with Usain Bolt, the gold rush. White privilege. This is something very crucial. Ryan Lochte, white privilege and racism. Hear what Simon Woolley says. And of course, the American elections. How can we do without that? You're watching In Review, the show that looks back at the biggest stories and brings you expert interviews on matters important to you. Joining us today to review the news is Paul McKenzie of Soapbox. Paul McKenzie is a professional public speaker, life coach, NLP, master practitioner, stand-up comedian, three interesting and rewarding talents that have allowed him to produce changes in the lives of hundreds of clients over the last 15 years. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and I introduce you to Paul. Paul McKenzie, how are you, sir? I'm good today. How are you, sir? I'm good. You called me out of my bed to this Westminster location. Um, I'm good. I'm good. I'm yeah. really good today. I'm blessed to be here today with you. Fan okay, fantastic. Now, tell us, Paul, I mean, before we get into the review, um, tell us a bit briefly about yourself, because that's how I found out about you, because of your voice. <laughs> because of my <laughs> voice. Don't tell my wife that, because a lot of, a lot of people like my voice. Yeah. But that's not only, I mean, that's a part of what I do is, is a lot of voiceover work, a lot of talking, as you know, a lot of speaking up on points that I find valid uh, within the community and outside of the community. So that's kind of where the whole voice thing came in. And that's where you heard the voice, because I'm always ranting about something. I run a company called A Soapbox, you know that. And A Soapbox um, basically is a company that highlights stories through social media. And so it's the story of the everyday man. And we kind of believe at the soapbox that the everyday man has a voice. Yeah. So we're here, for example, talking about politics today, but when my spiel is actually, what does the everyday man really feel about politics? And, and so we film those stories and then we put them on social media platforms yeah. for other people to debate about them yeah. and, and hopefully reach some kind of a solution. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's, that's basically what we do in a nutshell. Right. Fantastic. Now, today, I mean, um, as for the news, there are top, lots of top news which are out there. And, uh, and what we have decided is to look at the top news that matters to us. And that's why I want to bring in, like, different persons from the community, i.e. Paul, to look at these things right in the heart of Parliament here, right at Westminster. Now, one of the big news this week has been the Night Tube has been launched on the London Underground almost three years since the plan was first announced. Train now runs on the Victorian Central Lines on Fridays and Saturdays between... 0.30 British Standard Time and 5.30. Now, this was by Boris Johnson. Some will say, it's sad he can. You know, it doesn't matter. Paul, what do you think? Good idea? I, I think I think a night tube at the weekends means uh, more capacity for drunk people to get home. <laughs> That's what I think. I think it's, um, I mean, if you go across Europe and mm. different countries, yes. it's not new. Yes. It's not new. It's new here because... Uh, you know, we seem to be behind in travel standards. This is what I'm finding. So night tube is all good if they're going to improve the standard yes. of the service. I'm not really interested. I think the tube should run 24 hours anyway. I think the standard is what we need to look at. And actually what we pay to use it, that's really what concerns me. I mean, traveling here today is ridiculous mm. amount of money just to get here and back. Yes. So in terms of the night train, yes. um, yeah, it worked for some people. It won't necessarily work for me because I hate London transport. Yeah. I avoid it like the plague because it's, it's too costly. And I feel that if I'm going to be paying that amount of money, I need to, I, I should have a quality seat at least. And, 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 and that is correct because, uh, of course, there was a recent strike talking about the, the, the other over trains, which yeah. cost in like some serious thousands for these season tickets. But one of the, thing, well, one of the things is that... Uh, there are lots of different strikes leading up to this. And uh, one asked a question, was it productive or was it unproductive? And the time when Boris Johnson was actually having the, the tug of war with the different unions. But can we say now that they have overcome or Sadi Khan is going to go into a season of discon discontent? <laughs> I, uh... You heard what I said about politics, right? <laughs> you heard you, you cannot tap me about politics yeah. because I, I just believe that politicians are politicians. They do a job. Mm -hmm. They serve the people yes. uh, to, to an extent. Yes. Uh, one story 
often leads into another story. Do you notice how the elections always kind of tie in? So one person always promises to finish what the other person yeah. never quite finishes. Yeah. So in terms of Boris offering that service, yeah, I think Boris was behind it. Whether Sadiq will carry it through, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the agenda. I mean, that's what they do. It's it's like a, it's like the relay. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, you saying both. I'm gonna hand it to you if you drop it. There's always somebody to pick it up. But the other thing, again, I'm thinking that maybe Ken might come in and say, hang on a second, it was my idea in the initial plan. <laughs> he could always say that. I mean, it's, it's a valid point. Yeah. I mean, these things take years. Mm. I mean, we, we, it's three years in the making. Yeah. That's what we know. But yeah. it's years and years of yeah. planning. And so in terms of whether or not it will be a good thing, mm. we have to wait and see. It's right. like most politics. We have yeah. to wait and see. We're always in a position of waiting wait to see. To see. Okay, good. Now, moving on from that now, and as you mentioned about politics, which is a tug of war and politics is all crazy. Now, the the opposition, well, uh, do we have an opposition? Anyhow, the opposition with Jeremy Corbyn and um, also Smith. Uh, now, Jeremy Corbyn recently said that if asked during the Labour leadership in, in Birmingham whether he would come to the aid of NATO ally should he be invaded by Russia, he said... I want to avoid us getting involved militarily by building up the diplomatic relationships. I do not wish to go to war. What I want to do is to achieve a world where there is no need to go to war. His rival Oswin Smith has told the debate we would have to come to the aid of a fellow member of the NATO. And also interesting today, we got Sadi Khan who is saying he's supporting Owen Smith. Now, what's your thoughts on this? Listen, listen, at the end of the day, we're in Parliament, and uh, this is a community. We have to have a voice. What we do we have say? To have yeah. a voice. Uh, whew, there's loads of people watching over there. Yeah. Maybe, if, maybe if we ask one or two of them, you'll get a true, a true light on the subject. I mean, whether or not we all want a world that is full of peace. This is yeah. the thing we all want. That so we're always going to move towards. Uh, the politician or the member of parliament that offers peace mm -hmm. because it's a natural process. I want peace, you want peace. Yes. However, a world without war, um, considering the state of the world at the moment, it's, it, it's a dream, mm -hmm. but it's not a reality. Yeah. And I don't think, personally, I don't think it's ever going to become a reality within our lifetime simply because uh, we all know how politics and war work together. Yeah, yeah. So one politician says, we don't want war. The other one says, you know, we may, we might have to help out yeah. if required, yeah. which normally does mean, hey, we're going in, we're gonna help. Mm -hmm. And so with me, uh, action speaks louder than words. If we want a world without war, then let's do it. Let's not talk about it. Yeah. Let's have a world without war. Let's have more peace. Yeah, more peace. Let's have more peace in there. <laughs> Well, 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 one of the things that even the Bible talks about, I came to bring war, I, I came to wage war. I came to wage war. Because at the end of the day, before you can have certain effective peace, mm. because NATO, um, with the different members, play a very key and crucial role. But I think what lots of people are actually saying, and it'd be good to hear what viewers say, is that do you see Corbyn as a very strong and effective leadership who is actually seeking to galvanize the, the UK or more a pawn of his cheerleading support. <laughs> it's funny because Jeremy, he's, he's, he's a nice, he's a nice, nice man. I've yeah. met him several times, and yeah. and um, between me and you, I I might be having him on the soapbox. Okay. Um, that's how that's that's how much I've been meeting with him. He's a nice man. He's a people's person. Yes, yes. He's a person that you can trust on face value. Uh, he's a politician, and there's only so much constraint that he has. He's a politician. Um, he's a very, like I said before, he's a very, very nice, personable person. He will pick up on your points. But at the end of the day, his hands have got to be tied to a certain extent. I mean, I just looked at him through the last elections. And if I, if I was to vote for anybody, yeah. it would have been him. Yeah. However, my power of um, voting has, has ceased since, I mean, I like action. Yeah. I'm going to vote for somebody I can see action. And so if, if, if I was to say Jeremy Corbyn was the man for the people, mm. Yeah, he seems like the man for yes. the people. Now let's follow through. This okay. is what I'm saying. Let's follow through. Okay. okay. So he's the man for the people. That's what we yeah. say then. That's what you say. Okay. Now, listen. Now, who goes like this? 
is it that way or is it which way? Is it which way? <laughs> <laughs> now, this has been a gold rush. I mean, we cannot go in further without talking about the Olympics. Uh, but before we go off to Jamaica, of course, the UK, the UK has been doing fantastic. It's really been a gold rush for the UK. I mean, they've been doing fantastic, isn't it? Um, Paul. I mean, the Olympics this year has been really good viewing. Yeah. Really, really good viewing. The, uh, Britain has done excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, despite all the complaints, I love yeah. it when they don't get a medal and then yeah. and they say, oh, because I didn't tell you about my ankle problem yeah. or I didn't yeah. tell you about... Yeah. 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 And there's always that doubt that we can do it. But we're doing very well. What yeah. did we get? 40? Well, Was it 40? Well, the UK... The UK well, uh, it's, well, 43? They're in second. For, they're they're in, in second. They're in second. With 40, 27 goals so far. 27. You can't complain yeah. with 27 yeah. goals. You yeah. can't complain. So, that, so in terms of performance, mm. they're pulling it out of the hat. Yeah. They're doing very well. You know, in some of the events, though, I wish I wish that there was more of a challenge, yes. um, and I wish that they would dominate a little bit more in some mm. of the mm. some of the events because they're clearly cleaning up on the events that uh, they're specialists at. Um, but we're going to come on to the. The yeah, other, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the mean, key Olympic. I mean, you can, you can. Go on. <laughs> but then you talk about you're going to open it up now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Then you talk about the Jamaican team yeah. who have not only brought gold medals, yeah. they brought entertainment yes. and they brought quality sportsmanship yes. Yes. to the Olympics. And I think um, in terms of the media, um, they should focus really on the rest of the team as well. I mean, Usain Bolt, yeah. he's the man, yes. but there's a team behind him. There's a whole team behind now, him. Now, now. That is very interesting what you said because I saw a comment today on Facebook whereby someone said that, okay, Usain is great, he has, he's a legend, he's almost immortal, but we don't believe it is time for him to be called a national hero of Jamaica. And what this person was saying is yeah, that yeah. let's give him some time to cement it because he's very young at this time. You know, people yeah. go crazy at certain times, you know. So, so I, I think, and you're right, you're right. And I think what people are saying is that there's a team factor. But mm. what Usain Bolt did is uh, something which has never happened before. Yeah. But there is a team. There is a Jamaica yeah, team. We need to, we, and we do need to focus on the, the teams. It's yeah. like, it's like, yeah, back to Corbin. He's a, there's a team of them. Team. It's not just him. Yeah. There's a team. There's Usain Bolt. Wonderful athlete. I'm not going to take anything away from him, uh, whether or not he is the man in the future yeah. to, to lift that baton and say, you know, Jamaica yeah. is the, it's, it's negotiable. Like you said, he's yeah. young. Yeah. Uh, he's at the height of his career. Yeah. Um, but there is a team behind him. Mm. And we have to start looking at that because that's when Jamaica will start really going on the map. Yeah. When you start identifying the team behind Usain Bolt and the other sprinters and athletes that are just as good in their, in their, in their, in their events. Yeah. And so those people need to be identified in order to kind of solidify yeah. Jamaica as the Olympic yeah. team. Now, now, there's something which you said there, and I want to pick it, pick it up based on your profession. When you see these level of feats by a, a black man and uh, Jamaica, what do you see it does for the UK youths? I mean, at this time, you know, let, let's translate that into the UK youths. I think what it does for UK youth in schools is it brings a role model yeah. that um, teachers uh, can manage yeah. in the school environment. It's a live role model, yeah. which they like, because yeah. um, I do a lot of work in schools and every role model is mm. Usain Bolt. Yeah. I'd like to see Usain Bolt going into those schools. Yes. I'd like to see Usain Bolt doing talks on how his life changed yes. through athletics. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. And I'd like to see Usain Bolt doing any, something something other than um, running in the Virgin advert. Yeah. I'd like to see him on the ground. Yeah. In fact, I'd like to see him on the soapbox. Well, Usain Bolt, you have heard that. We want to see you on the soapbox. Very soon coming. Okay? <laughs> now, now, that is awesome. That is awesome. And I believe everything needs to be translated because Usain Bolt is seen as an icon in Jamaica. People in Halfway Tree Road are just going crazy where he said, I'm the best. But there's something else what Usain Bolt says. And before he got even the, I think after he got the first goals, he kept saying, I'm a legend, you know, and I'll be great. And Mohamed Ali was one of those, per the power of speaking things, Paul. Power. The power. The, you, you touched on Muhammad <laughs> Ali now. Come on, come on now, come on. <laughs> Muhammad Ali now. When he said, I'm a legend, yes. you knew he was a legend. Yes. You know why you knew he, had a, he was a legend? Yeah. Because he was able to stand in a place, mm -hmm. hold his own through communication. Yes. Legends should be able to communicate change. Yes. This is very, very important. Legends should be able to speak, verbalize yes. world change. Yes. They should be able to meet at all levels mm -hmm. of parliament, of politics, and be able to speak 
change. And that's what Muhammad Ali did. He spoke change. And this is going back to what I said about Usain Bolt. He has to start speaking change into the lives. You, you, and fair enough, young people will look and say, I want to be like Usain Bolt. I want to be like Usain Bolt. Why? Yes. Why? Give, give me a reason yes. other than his, 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 his he's gold ref. His, yeah, he's running. And so with Muhammad Ali, you can go back through the history of Muhammad Ali yes. and see all the great things he's done in yes. terms of global change. Yes. And there are some things that are not even televised that he's done, which will come up in the future mm -hmm. because now he's gone. Yes. And as it does, you know, the work of a legend tends to come up when you're gone, when you're gone. Yes. Um, where, where, where you can't speak anymore. Right. And in fact, he couldn't speak for a few years. However, his work and his presence said a lot. Now, whether or not in 30 years, yes. Usain Bolt, will be an ambassador yes. for black people that that's that's debatable that's i'd that. like to i'd like to see it yeah. but i'm not sure if he's the man i, I i'm not sure if his communication so, is there yet so so therefore usain bolt is just at the start of the process what he has done he has just set the stage now the work begins what do we now say the, now the work be, the, the real work, work the real work begins now Fantastic. there's the, the olympics we just mentioned but there's something else a very sort of um low part of the Olympics with um, Ryan Lochte, which is the American swimmers and a couple of his mates yeah. when they went into the gas station and of course what they said that they were um, robbed uh, by police, mm -hmm. um, persons who as police. Now Simon Woolley, who was one of our previous guests on, well our first guest on the In Review, wrote a very powerful article on the Operation Black Vote where he talked about white privileges, white privilege and racism, whereby it talks about if it was a black person, it would have been completely different. Paul, I sum that up simply. What do you say? I think you sum that up <laughs> beautifully. Yeah. If it was a black person, the, the level of disgrace mm. would have marred the whole Olympics. Mm. If it was Usain Bolt yes, or the Jamaican right. team yeah. that walked in there and trashed the place, right now you'd, you'd be seeing Jamaican flags being burned. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Um, that whole thing about going in there and then blaming, hey, it was the police, mm. yeah? Um, and it becoming a race mm. issue yes. is a very important factor because th this kind of highlights the whole thing about racism yes. and how easily mm. it's triggered off. Yes. You know, the whole race card is triggered instantly yes. simply because somebody says who feels superior yes. that, hey, I, I've done something wrong, mm. but you know what? There's a group of people I can blame it on. Yes. That will get the. Sh it, it takes all of the highlight off of me, yeah. and and that is based on the stereotype, isn't it? Because a couple of his couple of examples that Simon put was in a, another horror story. Susan Smith in 2014 yeah. rang police, stating that her car had been carjacked with her two children inside by two black men. However, when the truth came out, it was revealed that she let her car and the children roll into a lake, killing them both, and. Other case of Bonnie Sweeten in 2009, who stole a million dollars, then rang in to say that two black men had kidnapped her and her daughter demanding a ransom. The moral of the story is this, yeah. Selborne. If you're going to do a crime, yeah. make it a big crime. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Blame it on the black guy. Yes. Because it allows you that level mm -hmm. of um, amnesty mm -hmm. at some point. Because... They will go far. They will investigate yes. it as a black crime. Yes. They wouldn't turn around and say, okay, hold on a minute. Are you lying? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, to push your children in a car and kill them yes. and then blame it on a black man. It sways the investigation. My thing is yes. this, is that, isn't that racism in a nutshell? Yes. Isn't it easier to blame the black guy? It wasn't too long ago, a black man used to walk on a film, mm -hmm. used to be sat in a cinema yes. and he would get two minutes and he'd be dead. So it shows you, do you understand? It shows you what the media feels about black people per se. And it's, it, if you look at the media, just look at the blackouts that they do. When, yeah. when black people tend to do good things, yeah. it's very low profile. Mm. When they do something out of place, not necessarily wrong, it becomes an Big. issue. It's a massive issue. In fact, it's bigger than the issue. Does that make sense? That's the media. And when a white person does something, mm. They have to dig in and yes. dig in and then find the truth. But it's easier initially yes. to blame the black guy. And that leads us straight on to the, our great footballer, God rest, rest in peace, 
who got killed by the police. Uh, that is um, something that we also need to keep following up because it mm. falls within the ambit of that. Um, have you any idea how that investigation is going? I mean, I haven't followed it up to the extent. I'm, I'm, I'm a person that I like to wait for the outcomes, yeah, yeah. Y you know, because the process yeah. is, is if, if I'm making a juice, I've got no interest mm. in the fruits until they're juiced. Yes. So I'm waiting for the juice, yeah? yeah? So the juice, so yeah, so I'm, at the moment I'm blending because <laughs> yeah. there's so many different points of view. So yeah. at the moment it's in the blending process. Good. I want to drink the juice. Good. Good. So I want to find out what the juice mm -hmm. tastes like when it's made. So the, the crucial message right here is saying, simply saying that let's watch the process and sometimes let's not be overreactive or emotional but be strategic, isn't it? Be strategic. <laughs> Wait for, make sure you put kale in the juice. <laughs> now, finally, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot go too far without going straight across to the United States of America where they're having the, the mother of all elections and something very interesting happened, happened just a couple of days ago where we had Donald Trump actually saying to black voters, what do you have to lose? You have not been having it well so far. Why not try Trump? I found it a bit very condescending, even though at the same time, people will say that the Labour Party and I, like the Democrat, take black people for a ride. But really, Donald Trump, I mean, Paul. Take black people for a ride. Isn't that the whole story of history? Wow. We're always on a ride somewhere. From the ship. <laughs> From the ship. Wow. We're always on a ride somewhere. And we're always... You, you... Right, okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Black lives matter. Black votes matter black economics matter when they need to yes. it's as simple as that when they need to matter they matter right now at the crucial stage in the election um donald trump is saying you know what black guy you know what black people yeah. actually i'm here for you yeah. but again i want to see the juice yes. i want to see the juice because i don't believe he'll win i believe it's a, i believe it's um a distraction of some yeah. sort, yeah. which again will come out in the end. And then you'll turn around and you say, hold on a minute, they've robbed us of our vote again. Yes. How did they do that? Yeah. Because all, of, all they've done is appeased us at the moment. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you follow the campaign from the beginning, yes. you would never say that he would have asked for that vote. Yes. And now all of a sudden, that vote is crucial. Maybe it's a numbers game. Yes. Maybe it's a, a values game. Yes. And, and, and I think, I also think that what is happening is now that he's looking at the figures, as you rightly say, and he's just playing. Because recently he also said, I regret saying certain things. <laughs> now he's saying that, but all the time he was just going for it, chomping through. And I don't think we need to spend more time on that. We know exactly what's going on here. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think the people uh, <laughs> I think the people that will be watching this will, will, will have their own point of view about yeah, the whole yeah. Trump thing. Yeah. It's an issue that makes really good press. It makes yeah. media and the media's all over it. But I think people are wise enough, and or actually I hope people are wise enough to see through, um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of a word without swearing, to, to, to see through the smoke screen. Yeah, the red flag. See through the red flag. Always see through the red flag. And put kale in your juice. And ladies and gentlemen, on that note, I want to thank you so much for joining us on In Review with Paul McKenzie. But before I go, I want to give Paul an opportunity to give his word to you for the week. My word to you for the week is this. Um, oh, that's a, you put me on the spot there. My word to you for the week is this. <laughs> Wherever you are in your life at the moment, always know that you have the ability to change something about your world. Always know that your world is not changing you. You are, in fact, powerful enough to change, if only one thing in your life, which will affect everything around you. Stop listening to people that tell you that you are or you can't do because those are the people that are holding you back those are the people that don't want you to achieve anything in your life those are the people that claim they love you and um, so my message for the week and this will be going out on my platform again is, is is actually love is actually learn to love yourself more learn to trust yourself learn to trust your own wisdom some of the stuff we spoke about here today is basic wisdom use your own wisdom you will find the truth <laughs>